This picture illustrates perfectly what we're going to talk about. The integumentary system, which is the skin, and also the general senses, like this pinprick, or the sensation of pressure, or touch, or temperature. The skin is composed of the epidermis, the dermis, and then the subcutaneous layer, or sometimes called the hypodermis. If you remember, the epidermis is made of stratified squamous epithelium, and the deepest layer of the epidermis is called the basement membrane. You can see that pretty well here. The basement membrane, that's the layer of, of cells that separates the epidermis from the dermis. And in the basement membrane, that's where you have the cells that are actively dividing, and then they get pushed up. And then as they reach the surface, um, they fill with keratin, and you can no longer see the nuclei, and they die. So on the very surface of the epidermis, we have stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. And these little ridges here are called the dermal papilla. See, it's like a projection into the epidermis. These not only um, are responsible, the, the distribution of dermal papilla are responsible for your unique fingerprint. So they, they make up the fingerprints, but they also form an important mechanical connection between the epidermis and the dermis. The increase in surface area allows for stronger contact. In the dermis, we have sweat glands. Here's a sweat gland. Here's another sweat gland over here. And then the sweat would travel through the sweat gland duct and then would ultimately um, find its way to the surface and um, be squeezed out of these pores. We also have hair follicles. Here's a hair follicle. Hair follicle is like the entire organ that produces the hair. So these layer of cells here and around the hair would be the hair follicle. The hair is made up of the hair shaft. And then the hair is um, connected to this muscle called the erector pili or pile, however you say it. And when that contracts, um, it causes the hair to stand on end. Like if you get goosebumps, that would be um, your rector pile being activated. You have sebaceous glands that wrap around the hair follicle. Here's a sebaceous gland. Here's another one over here. The sebaceous gland is responsible for creating and secreting um, like an oily fluid that lubricates the hair. So when your skin gets oily, um, some of that would be from the sebaceous gland. And then let's look at the tactile or Meisner's corpuscle. That's located in the dermis here in the dermal papilla that responds to light touch. And then we have the lamellated or passimian corpuscle that responds to deep pressure. And you see that's deeper within the dermis. All right, let's look at the epidermis a little more closely. Remember that's stratified squamous epithelium and the superficial layers are keratinized. So here's the keratinized layer up here. This is all epidermis. And then remember, we have the basement membrane. Here's the basement membrane. Here's the basement membrane as well. And that separates the epidermis from the dermis. And then these projections that project up into the epidermis, remember those are called the dermal papilla, and those determine um, your fingerprints. Okay, the dermis, that's made of both loose connective tissue or areolar connective tissue, especially within these dermal papilla, that's where you find the loose connective tissue. And then deeper in the dermis, that's where you find the dense irregular connective tissue. And the dermis is where you find the blood vessels, the sensory receptors, the hair follicles, which we'll look at on this slide, sebaceous glands, sweat glands, etc. So let's look at the hair follicle more closely. Remember, the whole organ right here is considered the hair follicle. Here it is in cartoon picture. We have the hair root that's deeper towards the hair bulb. And then as we go higher up, um, it's no longer um, called the root. It's just the hair shaft, and it's made of just dead keratinized squamous epithelium. So here's the hair follicle here again. And then the hair bulb, that's the part down here. Here's where we have active cell division. And then the hair root is here. And then up further here would be the hair shaft. Oh, and then also we can see adipose tissue here. I just noticed that, no. So this would be within the hypodermis down here or the subcutaneous layer. All right, continuing to look at the dermis, let's look at the sensory receptors. 
First, let's look at the free nerve endings. See these free nerve endings? These um, dendrites um, sort of find their way through the epithelium here. These are free nerve endings, and these function as warm receptors, so like um, thermal receptors, warm receptors, and cold receptors. The warmer sensors, the warm receptors, are responsible for sensing temperatures um, between 77 degrees and 113 degrees. Cold receptors, those are responsive to colder temperatures, 50 degrees to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Just for reference, um, a warm hot tub that you might get into is about 100 degrees, maybe 102 degrees. But you probably notice when you get into the hot tub, at first it feels real warm, but then after several minutes, you begin to adapt to the temperature. It's called sensory adaptation or sometimes called accommodation. And you no longer feel as warm. Um, that's because after a minute or two, um, whether it's warm receptors or cold receptors, um, your body adapts to it and you no longer send that signal to your brain. Sensory adaptation is also evident. Um, for example, right now, you're not listening to the background noise that, that's, that's going on. You're also not aware right now um, of the pressure that's on your bottom as you sit in your chair. That's all because of sensory adaptation. Free nerve endings also responsible for um, um, sensing pain. Those are called nociceptors or pain receptors. Now, sensory adaptation is a phenomenon that's not experienced as, as much um, with pain receptors. And you know that, like if you're to burn your skin or cut your skin, um, you don't really accommodate to that quickly. You feel pain for hours um, when, when you've stimulated your pain receptors. We already saw these. These are the tactile or Meisner's corpuscle. They're located in the dermal papilla. Here's one here under a microscope. And those are associated with light touch, stretch, and vibration. For example, if you were to run your fingers across your desk right now, um, you're stimulating your Meisner corpuscle. The lamellated corpuscle or passimian corpuscle, that's associated with deep pressure, stretch, or vibration. So if you were to make a fist, a strong fist, um, the deep pressure that you feel would be stimulating the passimian corpuscle. And lastly, we have the hypodermis, which really isn't an official layer of the skin, but it needs to be discussed, or the subcutaneous layer. And that has both loose connective tissue, where it's areolar tissue, and abundant adipose tissue. And the reason why, um, I think we know this, but the reason why these layers don't separate is the collagen fibers and the elastic fibers in the dermis, um, that blends in with the with the fibers of the hypodermis. So that's why you don't get separation of those layers. You just get stretching of those layers. If you've ever had a shot at the doctor's office, maybe you've noticed um, that the needle is sometimes called a hypodermic needle. Um, you know, I suppose like a sewing needle, a hypodermic needle, hypo meaning below and dermic meaning below the dermis. So hypodermic needle is one that's injected below the skin 